Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm photographing dragonflies today, or any insects that I can find really, but predominantly dragonflies. So I've come to a really lovely local location. It's uh, a series of ponds. Uh, there's lots of lilies here. Um, you can see probably just over, over there in the background. And um, the sort of conditions um, we want to photograph dragonflies in is warm, still weather conditions. And today it's perfect, it's really warm. So that gets the dragonflies up and active and it's very still. So it makes it A, easier to photograph because when they've landed on a perch, they're not being blown around. So it makes composition easier. And secondly, um, it's better for flight shots as well because they'll be up and flying a lot more often. So yeah, um, I've got dragonflies literally all around me at the moment. I've taken quite a few using my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom lens because the beauty of that is, is you can't always get close enough if they're out on a lily pad or right in the reeds. So I can use the 200 to 500 and that will give me a big enough image in the frame. So these uh, big zoom lenses are great uh, for dragonfly photography. Now it won't give you a full uh, one to one uh, life size macro ratio but it will give you, uh, especially if it's a big dragonfly or damselfly, it will look big in the frame. So it's a close-up picture. And uh, for this sort of subject, that's all you need. But I've also got my 105 macro lens. So if I can get closer, um, that will give me that really detailed shot on, you know, on the eyes and the body. Um, and it all depends on where they're landing. But the beauty of dragonflies is that they'll often have a perch that they fly back to. And just over here, in this little um, bed of reeds, uh, I've had loads of dragonflies and they've been flying off uh, looking after their territory because they're very territorial uh, dragonflies and they're flying back onto the perch so you can predict where they're going to be. So as I say I've got some shots with the 200 to 500 already but I'm hoping to get some shots with the macro lens as well. So it's all good. Uh, as I say weather conditions are perfect, warm and still, ideal for insects in flight and just it's ideal for those insects uh, being more active. So that means there's more chance of them being out and about and me getting some good pictures. So uh, I'm going to uh, literally wait here until the dragonflies come back for a rest. So uh, I'll speak to you soon, guys. Right guys, uh, I'll switch back to my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom now because I'm doing, uh, I'm trying to get dragonflies in flight. Now, it's really tricky because they're fast, but as I say, the beauty is they do follow a fairly regular flight path. So it gives you more chance to track these fast moving animals. Now, camera settings wise, I'm shooting at 3,200 of a second, really fast shutter speed to freeze the motion of these fast moving animals. Although sometimes when they're hovering, they're quite static. Uh, I'm on um, ISO 800 at the moment, and uh, my F number is, uh, I'm on F, uh, F5.6. Although, um, I will, if I can get F8, I would do, because that'll give me a little bit more depth of field uh, on the body of the dragonfly. And then uh, I'm on continuous focusing, so um, I've, um, I'm continually focusing, trying to keep that dragonfly in focus. Now, if the uh, autofocus doesn't pick it up quick enough, I just flick my AF, uh, on my manual focusing ring here and that gives it a helping hand so um, focusing is tricky but it's better to have it on continuous so that your camera is continually refocusing on that moving subject um, I'm on um, a continuous shutter release as well so I'm on um, quite a few, you know as many frames a second as my camera will do uh, and that's about 10 frames a second on this one um, and um, I'm zoomed out to 500 millimeters at the moment because there's one on there again so uh, it's just coming in, so there's one just over there landed, so I'm just going to wait for it to take off and hopefully pick that up as it, as it takes off. So we'll see how we get. Uh, there's going to be a lot of out of focus pictures as well, uh, but you're hoping to get those one or two that are in focus. So 3,200 for the second, f5.6 at the moment, ISO 800, continuous focusing and it should all be good. So uh, yeah, speak to you soon. 
For some reason, I ended up shooting these pictures of dragonflies in flight at 1 2,000th of a second instead of 1 3,200th of a second. And if you look at the wings, you can see there's a little bit of motion blur, and that's why. So I should have um, photographed these guys at a, with a faster shutter speed. It's just one of those things. I'm not quite sure why I made that mistake, but these things happen sometimes. I'm still quite happy with the shots, though, because I don't mind a little bit of a blur on the wings as long as the head and the body sharp. I've got a dragonfly literally just sitting here and um, it's just resting so I can get in close with my 105 uh, macro lens and I'm causing no disturbance whatsoever it's just in resting mode and as long as you're careful and you don't move too quickly it's surprising how close you can get uh, absolutely amazing um, I'm on uh, a 500th of a second now because um, the, um, this dragonfly is not moving and as long as I keep myself pretty uh, solid and I've got the vibration reduction on it's, that's a fast enough shutter speed um, and uh, yeah it's absolutely fantastic so uh, I'll speak to you in a minute I've mentioned on uh, previous videos that I've shot about macro photography I normally like soft even lighting so the sort of light you get on a cloudy day and if you look at this picture here it's a lovely picture of a dragonfly but the wings there's so much glare coming off the wings and that's because it was sunny at the time so sunny conditions are not great for macro photography or close-up photography I think I'm going to call it a wrap now. I've had a great morning's photography. I've uh, got dra loads of dragonflies, uh, some damselflies as well. And um, I think that's one of the things about close-up and macro photography. As long as you turn up t at the location at the right time of year uh, and, and the right weather conditions. So we're in um, the end of June at the moment, which is a great time for dragonflies and damselflies and all sorts of in insects in the UK. And we've got these warm, still conditions. You are going to find stuff to photograph. Now, it might not necessarily be dragonflies, although if you come to an area with lots of ponds, there's a very good chance of that. But the fact of the matter is, you're going to find something. There's going to be loads of insects, loads of different flowers, and they all look great in either macro or close-up. Uh, close so it's, um, it's one of those areas of photography which you're almost guaranteed to come back with something. With the bigger animals, you know, birds and mammals and stuff like that, you can wait all day and not find anything to photograph or not get any decent pictures. So the beauty of close-up and macro is there's always something to photograph and you're always going to come back with something. And it's a really nice form of photography. I mean, I'm growing a little wildflower meadow, tiny little meadow, down the bottom of my garden. But potentially, it's already drawing in insects. I could just walk 10, 12 feet down my, to the bottom of my garden, uh, 20 feet, whatever, and, uh, and I've got something to photograph. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as usual, if you have enjoyed it, if you get a thumbs up, a like, that would be brilliant. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that would be also, that would also be great. Um, and then if you've got any um, great macro tips or if you've got any great experiences of macro and close-up photography, just drop them in the uh, comments section below. Oh, and last but not least, I have got an online nature uh, photography course which covers wildlife photography and macro and close-up photography. If anyone's interested, I'll put a link in the description below. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.